I don't. I, all yeah. the updates are in the GitHub, and okay. I didn't. I, it's very difficult to synchronize them, so I just keep okay. keep working in the GitHub version. All right. So in order to know which link are you using, just do exclamation point to do like a terminal mm. command. Okay. And git remote dash v it tells you which uh, git repository are you using. Right. And exclamation point git branch tells you which branch are you using you just hit enter you are using the bar oh, okay so let's update it git pull it tells him please pull ah. the new stuff okay like if you if you i pulled here mm -hmm. and tells me you have some modified things so git checkout dots it tells you remove discard my modifications right well let's start let's record all this all right. it's recording okay so in case you have some conflicts, just do git checkout dot. This will just erase your modifications mm -hmm. and will give you get you back. Okay. And when you do git pull, you will get all the modifications. Right. So now let's do star cocosim because uh, we need to start it. Uh, star cocosim will add this to the path. Will add cocosim menu to the simulink environment okay uh, also the, if you know install cocosim lib this is to tell him please update your files from iowa version so in case like there are some modifications in iowa starts cocosim is making sure that so for example this is cocosim nasa mm -hmm. this is cocosim of iowa you see github cocosim so okay. it's not ours. Ours is NASA, it's not right. UVNV. Right. So here it says, okay, it's up to date. Nothing has been changing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this will not do anything as well. Up to date, but I'm just making sure that um, things are uh, removed. So okay. now you should not have a problem with, uh, I think, the library anymore because I fixed that issue. So you see the library now, mm. CocoSim library. Okay. It's the first thing you have, CocoSim specification library. If you okay. go to the contract, you can see that there is a contract. Oh, you don't see it. I don't know what's happening with this one. Uh, but the contracts library, it's empty. In case there is something wrong with this library, just go to the library in the source code. Okay. It's always in let's call it examples. It's contract cocosim lips or contract lips. Cocosim lips is calling contract lips. Mm -hmm. If you click on this, this will call contract lips. So cocosim lips contains some fancy blocks mm -hmm. besides contract libraries, and that's the important one. So we just go and open contract lib. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's already open. I don't know why he's complaining. Yeah. So the contract libs contains a contract, a mode, assume, guarantee, and validator. You always just copy this and use it. So let's go to the example. So absolute example. Mm -hmm. Absolute. This is the implementation. Okay. It takes an input. Right. I believe it is um, display data types. And we can ask him to pull data types. It's an integer 32. Mm -hmm. What he's doing is, if that input is greater than zero, then takes the same input. Mm -hmm. If it is uh, the opposite, which means negative, mm -hmm. then take this signal, and this signal is the multiplication of the input by minus one. Okay. So if it is three, then the output is three, because three is greater than zero. Mm -hmm. If it is minus three, then uh, it's it's negative, so we will take this, which is minus one multiply minus three, mm -hmm. so it will be three. So this one just doing the absolute value. Okay, it's a very simple implementation of absolute value. Okay, you understand? Yeah. yeah. So what is like? Uh, very, this is a silly example. Just like um, you want us to create the contracts from scratch, for example. Uh, mm -hmm. So here you see I changed your model, okay? Mm -hmm. If you go to do git status, you, git will tell you, hey, you have um, things changed in your, uh, oh, d don't worry about it. So this file is not our code. This example is not ours. It comes from Iowa. Mm -hmm. I copied here. You see I copied some things from here. Okay. I copy uh, 
uh, to the examples. Uh, yeah, all the examples in, inside the contracts folder mm -hmm. are copied to our examples contracts. So all these file, uh, files are not included in our gates. We copy them from outside. Okay. So if you modify them, it, you don't care about it. That's okay. why Git Stasis doesn't complete because it doesn't know this one. Right, right. It's not part of our code. Okay. Okay. So uh, here we want to add a contract. Mm -hmm. So if I type contract, the same as I, I add any block in Simulink, you can type just the name. For mm -hmm. example, uh, switch. You just type switch and it will provide switch. Mm -hmm. So when you type contracts, it will tell you do you, uh, do you want the contracts from Cocos in specification library? Mm -hmm. That's maybe the same one. Okay, <laughs> we don't only have one Cocos in library. Right. So it's just bring uh, a simple contract. Mm -hmm. okay? okay, if you if you don't have it and you cannot access it from that uh, type, and you go to the library block. If you don't have it now, you, we have it. You see, mm -hmm. if we, you don't have it, neither by writing, neither by uh go into the simulic library just open it yourself okay uh open it in the libs folder and just copy it yourself right. uh, from the contract lib folder okay? okay just copy it like this okay mm -hmm. so now we have it uh, we are lucky and we are talking a contract is an observer mm -hmm. it's called observer or monitor mm -hmm. which means it monitors something right and the contract is always attached to a component Okay, uh, in Simulink, the way we use it, it's attached to, when I say components, I mean Simulink subsystem. Okay. So for example, this contract is attached to this apps subsystem. Mm -hmm. It doesn't know what is the input. If, if you put this as a constant and put it three, he doesn't care. He only sees this as there is something coming here and there is something going out. Mm -hmm. So this contract is telling him, hey, here is the specification of this specific component. Here is the assumptions on the input, and here is the guarantees on the outputs. Mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. same I explained to you the other day. Mm -hmm. Here is the information that I'm waiting from the input, and here is what I can guarantee as a component. That's the contract. So we put the contract to specify things, mm -hmm. to specify what the functional requirements, what the, uh, the, the subsystem should do okay in in some uh, so when you go inside the component the contract you have uh, by default it comes like this with one assumption one guarantee and two modes but you may not need all of them you may not need any assumptions you may not need any guarantees okay so here you can tell him tell tell the contracts how much how many assumptions you have mm -hmm. in our case we don't have any assumption on the input. We know the input is int 32, but we don't have any assumptions. Mm -hmm. Okay, we will say zero assumption. Okay. We have one guarantee, for example, let's prove that the output should be always greater than zero. Is it not the case? We are doing absolute value. If it is three, then three. If it is minus three, then three. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we want to prove, yeah, this component should implement the absolute value. Mm. The absolute value can be implemented in different ways. Right. You can use switch, you can use the absolute block, you can use other stuff. Yeah, so let's see if that implementation is correct. Mm -hmm. So maybe the, our property is prove that the output is always greater than zero. Okay? Mm -hmm. So let's have one guarantee. Do we have do we need modes? No, we don't have modes. Modes are useful when you have there are special types of guarantees. They are just the guarantees of the type A implies B. So for example, Let's say you have a stopwatch model. Mm -hmm. You have a, a subsystem that implements a stopwatch. Mm -hmm. A stopwatch has a button called toggle and a button called reset. When you toggle, it starts the stopwatch. When you toggle again, it stops the stopwatch. When mm -hmm. you toggle, you, it starts. Mm -hmm. Whenever you toggle twice uh, in a pair, the number is pair, even, then it's, it's running. When it's odd, it's not running. Mm -hmm. And the reset returns you to zero. Right. That's it. Right. And w so what are the modes are you have you have in the stopwatch? So the stopwatch is even running mm -hmm. or stopping mm -hmm. or reset. Okay. And you can say, oh, I need three modes here. So uh, that's why the modes are useful. Mm -hmm. So the require is the condition that tells you you are in that mode. For example, in reset, you are only in the reset mode if the reset single is true. So you hit the reset button. Mm -hmm. So your required condition would be reset. Mm. equal to true okay and the ensure will be the output is zero the time whenever you hit reset 
the output is zero. So mm -hmm. that's one mode. And you can do the other modes. For example, the second mode will be running. When are you running? You are running by uh, the number of toggles are even. Mm -hmm. You can have a condition that says, you, oh, now you're running. Okay? Mm. It means that you, while running is very easy, you can keep track that you weren't running before and you toggled again. Mm -hmm. Now you are running. Okay, okay. and the, the ensure will be that time increment doesn't keep it same. So it's next time it's incrementing by now one. Mm. So your value now it's greater than the previous value. That's okay. your ensure. That's your property. Mm. So the last mode will be the mode is uh, stopped. The time is at ten, for example. You toggled and it stops at ten. Mm -hmm. So how you can check that? You can have the condition that says. I was running and I toggled now. Mm -hmm. It will make me stop. And it will make the stopwatch stop. And the time should be the same as the previous and keep the same. Mm. So you have three modes. So it's like it's a very special type of guarantees. Okay. You can in fact the the mode can be specified as a guarantee. Mm. You just have A implies B. Okay. You have the require implies ensure. Whenever the require is true, you should ensure that the ensure is true. Hmm. Whenever you have reset, you should ensure that time is equal to zero. Hmm. Just instead, if you go inside the mode, it's nothing. It's just an implication. Implies. The set of your requires implies the set of insures. But why we use modes is make it more readable. We can say, oh, this system has modes. Mm -hmm. It can be in this mode, this mode, this mode. And CuckooSim can try to figure out, are you missing some mode? Mm. Are your conditions here are complete, which means that did you miss a mode that you didn't specify? Mm. So CocoSim can give you this property called one mode active at least all the time. Mm. You can have two modes active at the same time. We don't care, but at least you need to have one mode that is active. Ah. And that could be useful. For example, a, a, an airplane can be in different modes mm -hmm. and number of modes. Are you sure that you specified all modes? and you prove the properties associated to each mode mm -hmm. so that's mode okay most of the time i don't use them but they could be useful okay. now you know how to use them mm. i can show you the stopwatch example later on okay. so now you see he removed the links with the modes and the assumptions because we put zero assumptions and zero modes okay if you want to add the modes just type here you want a two three modes like the stopwatch mm -hmm. it will add mode one mode two mode three Say. But you need to go to the library or you just type mode and see if it is a cocos and specification library written here. And now you can have the mode. Mm. You see? Okay. Very easy. Perfect? Mm -hmm. Now let's go back to zero modes, one mo a guarantee and one assumption. So in that guarantee we don't need any input. We just need to prove that the output is greater than zero. Okay. Yeah? Mm -hmm. That's what we want to prove. Guarantee output is positive. Just give it a meaningful name. Okay? okay. So you just implement your property here. So what will be your property? You, your property will be something compared to zero and switches to like this. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. You want to prove that your property output of the component is always greater than zero. Is this correct? Okay, yeah. Is that, is, is that enough for you? Do you have another property in mind? Absolute value? What, uh, does absolute value have to be equal? I mean, here you just ch check and sign, right? Yeah, so that's a good. That's another property. You can say, I need to be equal to my input, mm -hmm. the magnitude of my input. So if I'm three, then my input should be three or minus three. Right. right. Yeah. So you can have another property says, uh, if if my input, uh, I should be equal to the absolute value of my input, which mm -hmm. is the same implementation. Right. But yeah, you can have that, or maybe you can do. Um, uh, my output minus input is equal to zero or double me. Mm -hmm. If you do output minus input, it's even three minus minus three, which is six, mm -hmm. or three minus three, which is zero. Mm -hmm. So it's even zero or the, uh, the two multiply myself. 
mm -hmm. to multiply the output right you see yeah so yeah uh, you can specify it in a simple way mm. you understand okay but let's first start with this one right right but if you want to add the other one you just add here name two guarantees and just put another guarantee just type guarantee and then write your guarantee again here it says um the same magnitude for example yeah is that okay mm -hmm. then you can add the inputs in this case because mm -hmm. you need the inputs in that case so for example um in will be the input and we can use the output as well And we said that uh, the output should be, uh, we can do the sum and we say plus minus and output minus input should be equal to compared to constant to zero is equal to zero or equal to two multiply. We can do again with two and and compare it uh, to multiply relational operator with an equal sign that should be equal to um, to the results so here is equal to zero or this one is equal to this so that the both cases you have and now you have a logical operator which is or so now you have even the case where both are positive, so this, the difference will be zero, or the input is negative, so the difference will be two multiplied output. Mm -hmm. Is that good for you? Okay, yeah. Yeah, so now you are using the inputs and using the outputs. Mm. You see? Mm -hmm. And now we can just add the inputs here. The order is not important. Just make sure that the name tells you all oh, I use this input so ah. you can call it whatever you want you can call it X and Y you just make sure that the Y is this and right the names are not important just make sure you map them correctly okay yeah is that is that fine with you okay so now yeah. we simulate we make sure that the model works and uh, now we can save it and run CocoSim. So hopefully, since we started CocoSim, we should have proof properties. But before proving properties, we need to see preferences. Make sure that we selected the right preferences. Okay. So let's go. Let's go over the preferences. So the first preference says, which compiler are you using? Mm -hmm. It says we have NASA compiler and Iowa compiler. Yeah. Keep it always at NASA compiler. Okay. If you keep it Iowa, I don't guarantee anything. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. NASA compiler preferences. So skip compatibility checks. So for example, uh, the first step I'm doing is making sure that you don't have a block that we don't support. Okay. But maybe the that step is taking too much time for a large model mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you run CocoSim the first time I'm telling you oh you are fine you have no you have everything supported right and you don't want to have again yeah. and again so yeah. you just maybe did do it for that model okay but if you do it for that model it will be done for all models because these preferences are for any model hmm. so are global not local to that model ah. so make sure to disable it again uh, skip defects in preprocessing block. So you you know the preprocessing step. We take a block oh. and we preprocess it to a subset of block more simple. Right. Yeah. But sometimes this preprocessing, if you remember, we have problem with the gain mm -hmm. and problem with other blocks with where we miss some parameters to pass to the other substitution, mm. and that will break your model. And in case the breaking model. What I do, I backtrack and say, oh, this preprocessing is bad. It's breaking my model. You just ignore it. And I will res restore my block before doing that preprocessing. And that makes, that's very important because you want to keep the model compiled. Mm. But maybe later on, after the preprocessing, say, oh, the compiler doesn't support that block. Because the compiler assumes that this block will be handled by processes. Mm. But at least you have the information that the, uh, there is a, an error report says 
Oh my, this block X is not supported in the compiler. I say, oh, the user should do something about it. Mm. You see what I mean? But if you disable it, then you may have errors and you will not understand why the error coming from because we did some modification on the model and you don't know which modification is problem. Okay. And that's not good for you. So I all that's why I put in parentheses recommended. Mm -hmm. Skip looser code optimization. It should be recommended. I do some looser code optimization and it's useless. Mm -hmm. I don't know for verification purposes is it uh, useful or not. But uh, what I do is just I simplify the looser code. So uh, some variables I remove them and they use their definition in other variables, mm. which make the looser code uh, smaller. You have less lines. Okay. But sometimes this algorithm is not well tested. The algorithm I do for optimization so sometimes I have problems that I I remove some variables and I have uh, they are used somewhere else mm. so that's why I need to remove it from cocosin because it should be only used when it's well tested and so I recommend keeping it active mm -hmm. for lucid cogeneration let's say you have a model that it's not completely supported by cocosin mm -hmm. but you are very comfortable with lucid Okay. And someone expert in Lucer wants, oh, I just want to have a partial code of Lucer. I'm okay with giving me something. And maybe mm. you give me 90% of the Lucer code, I will complete 10% myself. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So someone, this is not, that's why it's not active. It's only for advanced developers mm -hmm. that want Cocosim to generate the Lucer code anyway. Absolutely. And they can play with it. Right, right. Okay. Skip state flow parser check. That's because of state flow. State flow is a, a toolbox in Simulink. It's just like a set of uh, states and transitions. Mm -hmm. And you have states with uh, textual actions. You write an action called entry colon x equals zero, for example. You mm -hmm. have entry action, during action, exit action, and you have transitions. And in transition, you have also textual code. Like you have the condition written textually you have the action of the condition, you have the action of transition. And when you have a textual language, it's not Simonic anymore. Simonic is a set of blocks. Mm -hmm. You deal with the block as parameters and we can pass the, the block and we can know what the, the user chose, has chosen. But in case of state flow, we don't know if the, the parser we developed is very good. Sometimes the way that action is written, may, we may miss it in the parser. So that's why in this in this case, Cocosim, whenever there is a state flow block, it will tell you, hey, we passed this text and we understood this and this and this. Is that okay with you? And then you say, yes, that's a good parsing. Mm. It's just like you are making sure that whatever we parsed is the same thing that the user wanted. From. But let's say you have a lot of models, like a lot of blocks, state flow charts. And you don't want to do this again and again and again. You only want to do it the first time and make sure that Cocos and parses everything nice. Right. So you may go back and check this one, activate mm. it, so it is skip. The same as skip compatibility if taking a lot of time. Mm. So that's annoying for some people to ask them, hey, is, is this transition is good? Is this state action is good? Mm. Sometimes just go and activate this one. It will skip it. Mm. 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 Okay? Okay. So now we finish with the NASA compiler preferences. Now the ma NASA compiler abstractions. As you know, I, 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 may under I may explain this before, but you know that uh, in, in, in Simulink, we don't support everything. And even if we support a lot of things, there are some blocks that are not supported by the solver. Right. So for example, you have a block a trigonometric function like cosine. So what happens in Lucer, we generate a cosine as a black box. Mm -hmm and the solver will see it as a black box and we give it an abstraction we say to the solver we have two abstractions we have a very simple one we say that cosine is always between minus one and one mm -hmm. the output of cosine is between minus one and one which is true and that's always abstraction should be true should be but are not precise they are not precise but they are sound mm -hmm. okay so in that case the solver will use that abstraction it's like cosine he sees the solver sees this cosine as a black box mm. that 
give us something between minus one and one. Right. It doesn't understand the cosine. Mm -hmm. So in the counter example, let's say you run kind two and cuckoo same and you have a counter example and you see, oh, this counter example is stupid. It's telling me that cosine of zero is zero. Hmm. It's using the abstraction. It doesn't know what is cosine. We are just telling it it's between minus one and one. He picks zero, <laughs> but he yeah, the solver is right. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's stupid. He's right because we don't have a precise abstraction of cosine. Hmm. So there are many abstractions in in Cocosin. So the first abstraction is: Do you want to abstract integer type machine? So for example. In Simulink, we have in 32, in 16, in 8, mm. those are machine type integers. Okay. And in Looster, we don't have them. We have int. And ah. int is minus infinity, infinity. Mm. So in CocoSim, what we do, we add layers of rounding methods. So if you have an int, we tell kind to, hey, this is between minus uh, 128 and 127. Mm. So for int 8, for example. And we those are very uh very very bad for verification why because you add a lot of constraints mm. you are always tell him hey do some model calculation do some rounding whenever you exceed 20, 127 for int 8 go back and uh, see what's your value between minus 128 and 127 mm. so for example 128 will be minus 128 because it's overflow this in case if it's overflow if it's saturated on integer overflow then anything be uh, above 127 will be 127 and mm. anything below one, minus 128 will be minus 128 See. this is the case for int 8 so here you say abstract integer machine types it says just don't care about these types consider them as mathematical integers mm. they could be minus infinity and infinity this is useful when you want to prove properties that doesn't care about types. Let's say your properties are proving the logic and not the machine code. Like you are proving that, I don't know, it depends on the property. You are proving some logic and that logic is not impacted by the integer machine. Mm -hmm. Then it's good to go and click on this one, abstracts. Okay. In our case, it's not. We want to see what's happened now in integer type machines. Because in Lucer, if that is minus infinity infinity, if that input is minus infinity infinity, then the output is zero plus infinity, because it's always the positive. Mm. Yeah, but if it is int thirty two or, or int let's say this is int eight, imagine this is minus one twenty eight. Mm -hmm. What will happen here? It will be minus one multiply minus one twenty eight, and in Simulink that's one minus one twenty eight. Mm. Because minus 1 multiply minus 128 gives you 128 and it's above 127. And since it, it overflows, it goes back to minus 128. Ah. So your property is not correct. Okay. So your property that the output should be always positive is not correct in the simulink world. Mm. But it may be correct in the minus infinity and the plus infinity world. So if you treat integers as mathematical integers, which mm -hmm. is the set of Z, natural numbers, then your property is correct. It's always positive. Mm. But this one is not activated. So I will treat these integers as machine integers. Okay. So I will respect these constraints. So I hope that after we run Cocosim, Cocosim will provide us with a counterexample mm. that tells us, oh, let's use the minus int mean. Minus 128 is the int mean of of one, uh, int 8. This int 32, so the minus int uh, is a very big number. Mm -hmm. So it, it should give us that big number. <laughs> and that's powerful. The second one is use more precise abstraction for mathematical function. So that's the one I told you about cosine. So the simple abstraction of cosine is minus 1 and 1. Mm -hmm. But if you want a more precise one, it's just using a lookup table. Okay. It's dividing dividing the zero to p angle mm -hmm. with the breakpoints right. and just the uh, yeah. Right. Yeah. okay yeah it's still a sound 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 abstraction because you say just if the angle is between z zero and p four mm -hmm. then the cosine should be between this and this if the angle is between p over four and p over eight mm -hmm. or something like this p over two you just give values for uh, like a pi, you consider that uh, 0 to pi as a pi, and you divide the pi 
uh, with the with the 